What's going on guys, Fuller here with Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on the YouTube, back at it with another episode of From the Inbox. And I was absolutely dreading making this video because I didn't want to do it. Everybody in the shop said we shouldn't do it and here we are still doing it anyway. So the question that we're answering today is should I get a body lift and what are the differences between body lifts and suspension lifts? So first off, what is a body lift and what is a suspension lift? You kind of got to understand those two things before we dive deep into this video. A body lift does exactly what you would imagine it does based on the title, is it takes the body of your truck and lifts it up. So you're using this lift to put a space between the frame and the body of your truck, whereas a suspension lift changes the suspension geometry of your vehicle to lift it up using the suspension components. So your axles and everything stay in the same place. You're just lifting up the truck using suspension versus a body lift where again, the same thing happens, your axles and whatnot all stay in the same place, but your whole drivetrain and everything all stays lower because you're just lifting up the body of the truck on top of the frame where it would sit stock. So, why do we hate body lifts so much? If you've ever been through our YouTube comments, you've probably seen us reply back to people that ask about body lifts and tell them, just don't do it. There's a couple of reasons why we don't think that body lifts are a good option, though you can find them on the websites. If you do want to get one, you can definitely check them out there if you want to look into it further. But we personally don't recommend them, and we always recommend going with a suspension lift because you're just going to get better quality overall. So, body lifts, what do they do that we don't like? The biggest thing is they really overstretch components in your truck. So, if you have an older vehicle like a K1500, or a 1980s or 1970s truck, something that runs on less electrical components and doesn't have a, a giant brain box that's controlling the whole thing, you have much less wiring to worry about. However, when you install a body lift on something newer, you're stretching all that wiring and it can create problems with your vehicle if some of those wires come undone or they get stressed and frayed. And basically your whole truck just sh shuts down because it gets super confused with all the electronics that are going on. Especially like on the newer Silverados that use electronic power steering, there's a U-joint in there that connects basically your steering input from your steering wheel to the electronic power steering system. If you stretch that, it changes the angle and then your truck is confused as to where you want to turn and how much you want to turn. And we just don't believe that that's a safe thing to be doing if you've got yourself and your family in your truck and you're not able to turn. The other thing with body lifts is because they're putting a space between your frame and your body, you also have this weird gap throughout your truck where you can see through. It's really noticeable, uh, especially like underneath the box, where you can clearly see the frame and then a space about three inches and then where your box sits. If you have a Dodge Ram uh, that has the dual exit exhaust out the back, when you do a body lift, it takes up your bumpers and the tailgate and everything up, but because it's not raising you know, where the frame is and those exhaust hangers are mounted to the frame, you now have exhaust tips that sit three inches lower than the cutouts in your bumper, and that just doesn't look quite right either. And that kind of goes around all of the truck, and depending on which make and model you have, some of them are gonna bring up bumpers and some of them aren't. So if you ever see a truck driving around that's got a weird three inch gap between where the tailgate looks like it ends and then the bumper, like uh, older Chevy Silverados, like the 2000 to 2006 or 2007 when they changed body styles, those trucks always have a strange gap if there's a body lift in there. And the same thing applies for the front bumper. You'll see the grill sits way taller than where the bumper is because it's just bringing up the body of the truck and not the frame. I've said it a thousand times, but hopefully you get the idea. So that's why we always recommend a suspension lift because it keeps all of the gaps around the truck looking just like they did from factory and it's just a cleaner overall look. When it comes to install, it's significantly more expensive to install a body lift. So the reason why a lot of people do consider a body lift is because that initial price point is usually substantially cheaper to buy a body lift because there's no engineering that goes into it and no fancy parts. Half the time it's just something that looks like a hockey puck that you're stacking up to lift your truck with. So that's why there's so much less to begin with. However, that install cost is a lot more. We actually don't even do them here. Uh, Custom Offsets uses Offsets Garage to do all of our installs and they basically won't touch body lifts just because we don't recommend them. We don't think they're super safe on a lot of the newer trucks and they're just really difficult to install and people don't want to pay the labor costs because you literally have to separate your body of your truck from the frame. So if you do it yourself, you might be able to save uh, quite a bit of money on the install. However, 
it becomes difficult and it just takes up a lot of time. On an older vehicle, it's not quite as hard because you have less electrical components and hoses and whatnot that you have to worry about stretching. Um, and it is kind of a benefit in older vehicles because it makes it easier to do motor swaps if that's something that you're looking into in the future because it just gives you more space in the engine bay because you're pulling everything away from where that engine is bolted in sitting on the engine mounts connected to the frame. So if you haven't figured it out by now, it should be pretty obvious that we don't really recommend body lifts, though we do have them on the website if you want one. We always recommend going with the suspension lift because it's better ride quality, it's better for your truck, it's safer, and overall it's just it's way better to have a suspension lift over a body lift in our opinion. You can find the, our opinions all over the internet because we always share them with you guys. If you have any questions on lifts or you want to check them out further, head to customoffsets.com forward slash lifts and you can enter in your year make model and see what we offer for your truck. That's all for now. I'm out of here. Peace. Wow, that was a, I rambled on for a long time there. My tongue is too big for my mouth. Did you know that? It doesn't fit properly. What, oh, I will not make out with you. What do you think about body lifts? Why? Body lifts are a great option and everyone should run them. <laughs> Why does it sound like you're lying? Because I'm lying. Yeah. I body like lifts are extremely dangerous. No, they're not. And you should not run them unless your truck is older than 1988. Yeah. So moral of the story is don't. Don't moral run the story body is lifts. 